Hi. This picture tells the story of William Tell. Remember? He had to shoot an apple that was put on top of the head of his own son. His challenge, of course, was to hit the apple and not his son. So it was vital for him to take the right aim. He intuitively did the right thing because he was an experienced hunter. But he could also have solved this problem mathematically by using the arctangent. The arctangent is the inverse function of the tangent. The tangent is a so-called trigonometric function. And after you've watched this video, you will be acquainted with three inverse trigonometric functions. If you don't know what an inverse function is, I suggest you watch that video first. You can check if the inverse of a given function exists by doing the horizontal line test. When you draw a horizontal line anywhere through the graph of your function, it is allowed to cut the graph only once. Let's first find the inverse function of the sine. Take a look at the graph of the sine function. This horizontal line hits the graph in more than one point. So what you can do now is to restrict the domain of the function in such a way that on this new domain, it only hits the horizontal line once. What would an appropriate domain be? Looking at the graph, you see that an interval where the function ascends from minus 1 up to plus 1 would be convenient. And we mathematicians then prefer the one that contains the origin. The inverse function of the sine is called the arc sine. The domain of the arc sine, that is all the axes you are allowed to plug in, is the interval from minus 1 to 1, the range of the function, that is all the values that you can get out of it, is the interval from minus pi over 2 to plus pi over 2. Here is its graph. It's very important to remember the following. The arc sine of x is the angle whose sine is equal to x. Some books use the notation sine superscript minus 1 for the inverse of the sine function. Now let's look at another trigonometric function, the cosine of x. To define the inverse of the cosine of x, consider the interval from 0 to pi. On this interval, the cosine has an inverse. It's called the arc cosine. The domain of the arc cosine is the interval from minus 1 to 1. And the range of the function is the interval from 0 to pi. Here is its graph. Some books use the notation cosine superscript minus 1 for the inverse of the cosine function. Now, take a serious look at the graph of the tangent. You see it is periodic and has vertical asymptotes at multiples of pi over 2. So the interval from minus pi over 2 to plus pi over 2 is convenient for the domain to consider, right? The inverse of the tangent is called the arctangent. The domain of the arctangent is the real line, and the range of the function is the interval from minus pi over 2 to plus pi over 2. Here is its graph. Some books use the notation tangent superscript minus 1 for the inverse of the tangent. When you compute angles by using inverse trigonometric functions, you have to take the corresponding domains and ranges into account. Here is an example. What is alpha if the sine of alpha is equal to one half? In other words, find the angle whose sine is equal to a, a half. Here is the table you probably used to find the sine of certain angles. Just use it the other way around now to find that the angle for which the sine is equal to one half is pi over six. Pi over six is in the interval from minus pi over two till pi over two, so this is the answer. Next, compute the arc sine of the sine of 26 pi over 7. Now an easy but wrong answer would be 26 over 7 pi. Why? Well, because this angle is not in the domain of the function arc sine of x. You just saw this domain is the interval from minus pi over 2 till pi over 2. From the graph of the sine, you can see at what depth the sine of 26 pi over 7 is found. Let's see for which angle in the domain of the arc sine the same value is attained. Here it is. 
You get there by subtracting 4 pi from 26 sevenths pi. So you end up at the angle minus 2 sevenths times pi. In class, you will do more computations with these functions and learn about the derivative of inverse trigonometric functions.